Welcome to Social Allo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. You should never make a vow out of ignorance. You should never make a vow that you don't intend to keep. However, sometimes keeping a vow is not as honorable and as prudent as it sounds. Because there are times when people make inner vows, internal vows, and it's not a good thing. There are people who have made internal vows that may seem godly, as if they're doing the Lord's work, but it's one of the most ungodly things that a person can do. Because there are times then where people make a vow to go against someone who's actually doing the work of the Lord. So when the person opposes the one who's doing the work of the Lord, they're actually opposing God. And we see this with the Apostle Paul. Mm. But before I get into that, because there are times when we make a vow and we realize that it was ill-advised and we need to repent and possibly even ask the Lord to get us out of the situation. In some cases, it may require a legal recourse because making some vows if you keep those vows it may be detrimental it may actually result in death and it's better to break a vow and survive than to keep a vow and end up paying a price that will be too much to bear Like I mentioned, with the Apostle Paul, and I'll pick up the story starting in Acts 23, verse 11. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. So Jesus himself appeared to Paul and said that he testified of him in Jerusalem so he and he must also testify of him in Rome Jesus said that so if anyone's going to oppose the Apostle Paul they'd be opposing Jesus and when Jesus says something when Jesus says something guess what's going to happen however and when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they... Let me pause. And it doesn't even say a vow. It says a curse. And that's what some people do sometimes when they make a vow that they insist on keeping. It ends up becoming a curse because they're opposing the Lord. Even though it may seem godly, they're actually opposing the Lord. So again, banded together and bound themselves under a curse. So please, recognize when you've bounded yourself under a vow, as opposed to bounding yourself under a curse. If you say curse, get out of it. Hmm. Saying that they would neither eat nor drink until... They had killed Paul. So they were going to eat or drink until they killed Paul. A part of how that is detrimental is that the Lord said that Paul was going to go to Rome. So it was going to happen. And under this vow, which was actually a curse, they weren't going to eat or drink. The thing is, after about three days without water, your body starts going on in distress. person can drop dead because of lack of water after three days. The body can do without food much longer, about three weeks. After that, the person can basically just drop dead. So they're willing to make a vow where they can die because they insist on killing the Apostle Paul. So it's like they want to risk death 
by trying to kill the Apostle Paul, who was actually doing the work of the Lord. Again, Jesus said he was going to go to Rome. And it continues. And they were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. And yes, some vows are a conspiracy. A conspiracy against a person, a conspiracy against God. Hmm. And they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse. At least they realize it. Because some people are going around saying that they made a vow. But no, that was a curse. That we will not eat nothing till we have slain Paul. But it begs the question, what did Paul do why they should want to kill him? All he was doing was preaching the gospel. Preaching the gospel today, I mean the true gospel today, can get people in trouble. Now therefore, ye with the council signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow, as though ye would inquire something more perfectly concerning him, and we, or ever he come near, are ready to kill him. So they wanted to lure Paul into a trap to fulfill their vow, their curse. And Paul, Paul's sister, sister's son, heard of their lying in wait. He entered, or he went and entered into the castle and told Paul. And Paul called one of the centurions unto him and said, Bring this young man unto the chief captain, for he hath a certain thing to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said, Paul, the prisoner came, called me unto him and prayed me to bring this young man unto thee, who hath something to say unto thee. Then the chief captain took him by the hand and went with him aside privately and asked him, What is this that thou hast to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldest bring down Paul tomorrow into the council as though they would inquire somewhat of him more perfectly. And yes, people will make vows to set up others for their downfall and try to lure them in a trap. Hmm. But do not thou yield unto them, for there lie in wait for him of them more than forty men. Forty desiring to kill one. Wow. Which hath bound himself with an oath that they will enter, will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now they are ready, looking for a promise from thee. So the chief captain then let the, let the young man depart and charged him, See thou tell no man that thou hast shown me or shown these things to me. And he called unto him two centurions, saying, Make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea, and horsemen threescore and ten, so seventy, and spear and spearmen two hundred at the third hour of the night. And I'll pause here for a second. So 40 men trying to kill Paul. But Paul was in the Lord's will. The Lord is going to send backup. So you're going to have 
40 men versus several hundred. Several hundred centurions, <laughs> or soldiers, I should say. How do you think that was going to go? But also a teaching point that if you're doing God's will, know that he will back you up. As long as you're doing his will, know that he will back you up. Others may rise against you, but the Lord will back you up. And provide them beasts that they may set Paul on and bring him safe unto Felix, the governor. Jesus said Paul is going to go to Rome, so guess where Paul is going to go? And he wrote a letter after this manner. Claudius Lysias, unto the most excellent governor, Felix, sendeth greeting. The man was taken of the Jews and should have been killed of them. Then came I with an army and rescued him, having understood that he was a Roman. So one of the things that was in Paul's favor was that he was a Roman citizen. One of the things that's in your favor, if you're serving the Lord, is that you're a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. The Lord is not going to support evil when you're doing his work. And when I would have known the cause, wherefore they accused him, I brought him forth into their counsel, whom I perceived to be accused of questions of their law, but to have nothing laid to his charge worthy of death or of bonds. And when it was told me how that the Jews laid wait for the man, I sent straightway to thee and gave commandment to his accusers also to say before thee what they had against him. Farewell. Then the soldiers, as it was commanded them, took Paul and brought him by night to anti -partus. They made a vow to put their lives in jeopardy to kill Paul. But they weren't going to lay a hand on him. And if they wanted to keep their vow, they could die in their vow. They cursed themselves. And they could stay bonded to the curse for as long as they desired. But the Lord was not going to allow them to put their hands on his servant who was bound for Rome. 